Hi guys and welcome to Parkour DXB's next home learning video. Today, we're doing some hand balancing. So for today's lesson, we're gonna need a wall an open area, something soft like a duvet or some cushions, and we're going to need a broomstick or if you haven't got one of those, a towel. And now over to Coach Reen with a warm up. Okay, so first thing for the warm up, we'll do some uh, neck rotations. So, ears side to side to shoulder, and up and down, and left, right, and left. Make sure you go all the way, nice and slow, not fast. And then arm circles, firm, space. Do five times backwards, nice and slow. And then five times forwards. And then you this together and do some twists. Just twisting with our upper body. Then we'll do some hip circles. You can open up your feet a little bit. And do some circles with your hips. And circles the other way. Okay, now we'll get our feet together. Put our hands on our knees. And some circles with our knees. circles the other way now for our wrists which is the most important part for the handstand we can sit on our knees get our hands forward and then first we can do just some circles around our wrist my arm is straight and just doing circles around and go forward and backward, side to side. And then from here, we can do some push-ups with our fingers, like this. So we go up and down, like this. And you can move them to different positions. You can apply pressure with your body as much as you want and control it. And you can do some hand circles like this. And for the elbows, put one hand on one elbow, one hand, and go in and out. In, out, in. And the other one. And that's it. <laughs> okay, so now we're all warmed up. We're going to move on to a couple of exercises that are going to get us really ready for our hand balancing. We need to be able to create body tension all the way from our hands all the way down to our feet. So we're going to start with two positions that you will have done with us before, particularly for swinging as well. And this is our dish and hollow shape. So the dish shape begins laying on our back, arms up over our head, okay? And we're gonna use tensing our core to lift our arms and our shoulders and then also our feet off the ground. Now this is harder when the arms are up. You can make it a little bit easier by bringing the hands down and putting them somewhere here in the middle. And also, the closer to the ground actually you hold, the harder it is. If you lift right up like this, you gotta engage the core a little bit more but it's actually a little bit easier. Okay, so you're going to try and hold that maybe for 30 seconds at a time, do for a couple of rounds. Okay, the next one is the same thing but the other way around. This is the hollow hold. So we're here, arms up above the head, legs behind, pointing the toes, reaching the arms, and we use our back to lift our shoulders and our legs. Again, we can hold this for 30 seconds, a little bit easier if you want to bring the arms back behind you. And then relax. You can do that two or three times, holding for about 30 seconds each time. 
Now the last one we're going to do is called a shoulder dislocation, which sounds horrible, but fortunately it's not as bad as it sounds. <laughs> so we need our broomstick for this one. We begin with one hand on either end of the broomstick and we lift it up till it goes all the way over our shoulders and back until it touches the bottom of our back. Okay, so this all depends on how mobile your shoulders are. So maybe having your hands at both ends is a little bit easy. But don't rush to bring the hands close together because it's just not going to work. Okay, so we just very, very slowly, step by step, bring the hands closer together, trying to create more space each time. Don't force this one. Take your time and don't rush. So now you're warmed up and ready to go, we're gonna start by talking about the foundation, which is gonna serve all of our hand balances. So it's gonna start with our hands, and then it'll be on the floor, fingers spread nice and wide, and you'll be gripping the floor. This is probably gonna be raising your first knuckles here. The next part we're gonna talk about is our elbows. We wanna keep these nice and straight. What we don't wanna do is bend them too much because we wanna stack them above our wrists. By stacking them above our wrists, we're essentially creating what is like a building. So we create the strong foundation, we stack everything above that. If you don't have a strong foundation, everything's gonna come tumbling down. So these are nice and locked. The next part are our shoulders. And what we try to do here is keep them really engaged. So if we pretend that we've got some jam jars in our hands and we're turning the tops of those jam jars outwards, it really engages these shoulders and you'll notice that your elbows are now facing back towards you. So take some time now, practice it, and really try and imagine gripping the ground, locking the elbows, and twisting those shoulders. Okay, so now it's time to do our first hand balance. And the first one we're gonna do is the crow. Now the crow is a really good starter balance to start to get a feeling of how our hands come into play with helping us balance. Now, we're gonna need a nice open space, a firm enough surface so that we can feel the balance with our hands and then we're going to need a couple of cushions or something soft in front of you in case you tip forwards. Okay, so we're going to place both hands near the edge of our cushions and as we've just described, we're going to have our hands active gripping the floor. Now, we're actually going to bend our elbows this time because our elbows are going to create little shelves that our knees are going to be able to sit on in a minute. Okay, so we bend the elbows slightly and we start to walk the feet in closer until the knees are able to sit on top of the elbows. Now make sure as you start to make your way further and further forward, you keep the chin lifted to help us balance and then we rock forwards, forwards, forwards until we start to feel the weight to lift off of our toes. Now this is as far as we need to go to begin with. A few times come up and back down, okay? And as your confidence builds, start to go maybe a little bit further. And you'll hopefully at some point find a balance point. This is a point that feels somewhat comfortable. All of a sudden you feel like you could stay there at least for a little while. Three hours later. Good. So if you feel you've found that, this is our time to explore, concentrate and focus on the hands here, okay? See what it feels like to be controlling your balance with your hands and with your fingers, okay? Now, if you need to get down, the easiest thing to do, remember, keep the chin and the chest lifted. If they drop, that's what's probably gonna make us fall. Push down, <laughs> push down into the fingers as hard as you can and that will push your toes back down to the floor. Okay, so take some time now, practice this. Start very slowly, don't rush. If your arms and your hands and your wrists are starting to feel sore or tired, take some time to rest before you have another go. So having spent some time in the crow position, you've probably realized now how the hands are one of the most important parts of balance. Making those small adjustments from the very base is gonna be really, really important. So now we're gonna move on to the L stands. And for this, you're gonna need something raised. So we're using a table, but you might also wanna use something like a chair, depending on how tall you are. So obviously Coach Harry is a little bit taller than some of you guys. So we're gonna be using something maybe just below hip height. So first of all, his hands are gonna go down on the ground. And just as before, we're making sure our fingers are spread, gripping the ground. Our elbows are then locked, shoulders engaged, and then we can put more pressure on these by putting our feet up on top of the obstacle. So the real key thing here is, as well as building the foundation from our hands the whole up to our shoulders, we now try to keep our back nice and straight and keep our hips 
stacked over everything else, just like this tower block. So as you can see here also, his head is in between his arms, creating this nice straight line. Practice this, um, it's a bit tricky, so if you need someone to kind of watch you and help you adjust, and you know, tap this, push this here, then you can do that. Or one of the biggest things that helped me with this is by filming it on my phone and then just reviewing it, keep going back and making small changes. So practice this now and then we'll come back. Okay, let's go through a few common faults that we find during our hand balances. So one really common one is having our hands too wide. If we have our hands too wide, we're not able to effectively engage the shoulders and we've not created that nice stacking of our joints that we spoke about before. Similar one is not lengthening the elbows and keeping the elbows straight. If we allow the elbows to bend, we compromise a lot of that structure that we have and we're going to find it really, really hard physically. Another one is simply that we don't engage our core and keep our back straight. If we allow our core to relax, our back's gonna to start to arch, the hips are gonna fall over, and again, we're losing that structure. And then, once again, if the shoulders are not engaged, we're not creating that twisting motion with the hands as if we're opening those two jam jar lids, we're compromising the shoulders. So here with our hand balancing, it really, really is about creating that nice, straight structure with anywhere from our wrists, elbows, shoulders, or hips, or core, are compromised, we're just not gonna be out of balance. Challenge section. So for our challenges, we've got three pretty difficult ones, but one of them you've already done already. So the first one is gonna be the L stand with a raised surface. So what we're gonna be doing in this position is gonna be doing heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. So you're gonna be tapping each body part individually until you get the whole way down and see how many times you can do it. The next one is gonna be really similar. But it's gonna be up against a wall. So you're gonna be pushing against the wall with your feet. And again, heads, shoulders, knees, and toes this one can get a bit more tricky. And then the final one is gonna be a handstand facing the wall. And then again, head, shoulders, knees and toes. However, the knees and toes can be a little bit difficult because you have gotta almost go onto one hand. So maybe just keep it heads and shoulders or maybe introduce the hips too. For all of these, make sure you've got plenty of padded things around the area in case you go too far and you end up falling forwards. If in doubt, roll out. So if you have any strength left in your arms, we have one last little game for you. This game is going to require the wall you were just using, plus a coaster or multiple coasters. So what we're going to do is we're going to be in the L stand position or the normal handstand position on one side of the wall. And we have the pile of coasters on the other side of the wall. And then you're going to traverse the whole way along, pick up a coaster, put it on the back of your neck, and then we're going to try and traverse the whole way back to place that coaster down. And we'll repeat this until the pile of coasters is on the other side. And you can try and time yourself each time that you do this to see if you can beat your time. The other game that we can play is just putting all the coasters down and you can also put some other objects down as well and try and traverse back and forth between the wall, trying to avoid the objects with your hands. So if there's coasters down, you have to try to move around those. You can put them at different lengths out from the wall and also different lengths across the wall. So as always, please leave a comment in the section below to give us any feedback, to ask any questions, or even just to say hi. And don't forget, or you can also submit your videos to us on Instagram. Either tag us at ParkourDXB or at ParkourDXB Kids, or send us a direct message with your training. Remember, if you give us permission, we can feature you in the videos.